So this is without the damper. Custom built attachment to the vibration generator. So it's a fake building on a earthquake table to show what the building would act like in an earthquake. The signal generator, the vibration generator will make, find a natural frequency of it. And this tune mass damper with the mass on top should reduce the amplitude of the vibration. So that's oscillating, but the top of the building is, and you could have a blooming tea party on there. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. brilliant. It's still the thing about damping is it's still going to be taking energy out of the system. So it, it looks like to me like it's doing a good job for a range of frequencies there. Been up to four. I think I'll film like a, as it is going up without the damper, mm -hmm. and then try and get a graph showing where the maximum amplitude is. Mm -hmm. So I found the natural frequency of the building by using the equation T equals 2 pi root m over k, and then let it oscillate by itself and measure the frequency using tracker. The resonance is where the driving frequency equals the natural frequency of the building with maximum energy transfer leading to a rapid increase in the amplitude. So Adam here is doing an awesome project for his EPQ. If your school offers you the chance to do an EPQ, then I suggest take it. And my advice for EPQs is pick something you know you're going to actually be fascinated by and you're going to want to study for that whole year that you do your EPQ for. Essentially, the EPQ Adam's, is, Adam's doing is about um, building earthquake-proof buildings. And he's interested in these kind of, what do we call that type of damper? Tune mass damper, which the example you normally get is type A101, which is this giant pendulum uh, in some of the upper floors. And essentially, the idea of a damper is that it removes energy from the oscillating system. So what, would, uh, what the experiment he's running at the minute is he's going to going to oscillate his model building through a range of frequencies and he's going to be using tracker which he's just using a camera on a tripod there to measure the oscillation and the, the amplitude of that oscillation through that range of frequencies. So he's hoping to find that his mass tune damper worked best at the resonant frequency of the mass tune damper. So you've done it like once without this, yeah, and once with this. You've got this dot here to allow the video to um, you can be able to spot the exact same position when you do your tracker. Really cool, yeah. really good. It's really good. It's really good. It's a bit hard that time. Yeah, do you want me to stop and start this again? So that so fine. Ready? It just stops it, doesn't it? Yeah. Let's go. Without the damper. And then with the masking damper. So this is without the damper. This is looking at objects will resonate at their natural frequency, but also at multiples of their natural frequency. So, so if the natural was 2 hertz, then it should also oscillate at 4, at 8, at 16, and so on. Let me go again. 
Have you looked into what the kind of typical earthquake frequencies are? Yeah, they're pretty low, maybe like four hertz or even less. Yeah. Tune mass damper is following a mass spring system kind of pattern of oscillation, and that's T is two pi root m over k. So there's these two systems where you have to kind of tune the frequency of one thing to the frequency of the other. And well, if we you could carry this experiment on by changing the length of your building. One of my favourite things about physics is when you've got a kind of theory and you can calculate something and then you can build an actual experiment to test that. So I'm looking forward to seeing your results. Oh, he's going to do a graph. He's going to do a graph. <laughs>